You're probably wondering why I've got both a hoodie and a woolly jumper on. It's because Berlin looks like this now. And the weather prospects look like this now. I know, I know for all you Scandinavians and for all you others living in your frozen tundras, this is positively balmy, but for us soft European city folk, this is pretty cold. We're just not really equipped for dealing with temperatures much lower than 5 degrees. So a proper winter jacket is not really a high priority in people's wardrobes. And now they're really regretting it. In my opinion, as soon as the temperature gets much lower than minus five or so, you've got about two choices. You've got a sheepskin jacket or you've got a down jacket. Both of them come in a variety of styles. You can find something that works with your wardrobe. Both of them keep you super, super toasty. And both of them have pros and cons. So inspired by the weather, I thought I'd cover six points. Yeah, I think six points that's gonna help you make an informed decision as to whether sheepskin or down is gonna be the right choice for a winter jacket for you. Okay, one thing before we get started. I'm gonna be covering sheepskin so sheepskin leather, and I'm going to be covering down, so down from birds. I'm not going to be talking about the synthetic alternatives, even though I'm going to be talking about ethics and sustainability within these two products. For one reason, I have my reservations about synthetic materials in general. And for the other thing, up until now, I don't feel that I know enough about it to make an informed decision or tell you guys about it. And just looking at the script, yeah, this is going to run quite long. So I'm going to cover cost, style, weight, durability, ethics and sustainability, and practicality. And I'm going to leave timestamps down in the description below, so if you're interested in one part more than the other, then you can jump to that particular part. Okay, cost. I always like to start off with this because this, more than any other aspect, how much you can spend on this, how much you're willing to spend on this, that determines so much about what the right choice for you is going to be. And I'm going to be honest with you and I'm going to start off with saying these things, they ain't cheap. Bought you a good down jacket like this one from Crescent Downworks, it's going to run you around about $600. And the price, it goes up sharply from there. If you want to be all fancy French Italian and go for Montclair, that's going to run you upwards of $2,000 euros. I didn't check the, I didn't check the exchange rate. It's going to be expensive, and if you want something like this, which is a Nigel Caborn Everest Parker, like a personal grail piece of mine, that's going to run you upwards of £3,000. Totally worth it, in my opinion, but still, that's a lot of money. For the sheepskins, your base price is going to be a little bit higher. For around about the £700 mark, so that's $969 and around about €800. Euros. I checked the conversions this time around. Yeah, for that, you're gonna be able to get a B3, a B6, or a D1. At least that's from my mates at Simmons Built. That's my preferred leather jacket company. Other brands, uh, for the same models, you're getting a bit more expensive. And just like the, the down jackets, these prices rise really, really fast. If you wanna go super fancy in Japanese with something like the, I think it's the B6 from from the real McCoys, that's gonna run you about $4,000. So neither options are particularly cheap, but like most of the things, or hopefully all the things we're gonna talk about in this channel, this is gonna be an investment in the long term. Okay, style, this is a tricky one because it is entirely up to you. It depends what look you're vibing with and what look is gonna go particularly well with your own personal style. At the moment, the whole down jacket, puffer jacket thing is pretty on trend. It's kind of a trickle down from the whole mountaineering vibe we've had for the last few seasons. So if you are gonna go for the puffer jacket, it might mean that next season you're not so in style. 
if that kind of thing is important to you. Sheepskins are a little bit more classic, or at least they've not been in for so long that they're back to being a classic. The basis is in the military, and you're going to find most of the styles that you've got out there are variations of the classics like uh, the B3, D1, and the B6, or variations on that theme. And so they come with that association, they come with that aesthetic as well. So we're just back to that initial point, it's what works for you and your style in particular. Third point, weight. Hands down, the down winds. They are literally as light as a feather. All three of my down jackets weigh less than half of my sheepskin. Durability. Again, a little bit tricky. And this is going to depend a lot on what the outer shell of the down jacket is made from. If it's made from a light nylon like this one is, then one catch on a thorn and it's going to be through. If it's a wax cotton like this one, then yeah, it's going to be a little bit tougher. But again, if you rip through one of these, then all of a sudden you turn into a pigeon. And all the stuff that was inside, keeping you nice and cosy, is now on the outside just floating in the wind. Actually, okay, that's a pretty extreme example, pretty unrealistic example. And as you can see here, the down is sort of contained in these little squares, so it's distributed evenly over the garment. Otherwise, it's just going to all end up in the bottom of it. So yeah, if you've had some sort of weird accident where all of these are burst, then I think you've got much bigger problems than just being a little bit cold. The sheepskin will be more durable over the long haul. I mean, leather is just pretty tough stuff, right? And the wool, well, it was attached by the sheep itself. It grew it after all, so it's pretty solidly on there. Even if you were to somehow rip through it, the wool's going to stay attached, and all you have to do is get your sewing kit out. Leaving the extreme examples aside, I really think that the sheepskin is going to look better over the long term. I mean, leather just gets better with, with age and with wear, patinas. Whereas the nylon or the cotton or the polyester or whatever is used for the outer shell of the down jacket, with time and wear, it, it could end up looking a little bit shabby. Okay, ethics and sustainability. Both sheepskin and down are, of course, animal products. And so both of them come with their own certain set of sustainable aspects and ethical aspects that we have to consider. Let's start with sheepskin, because there's just no other way to put this. To get a sheepskin involves the death of the sheep. There's just no two ways about it. It is the sheepskin. But sheep have never been bred for their skin alone. The sheepskins are simply a byproduct of the meat industry. And in most cases, in the vast majority of cases, the sheepskins are either burned or buried. I mean, I think I read somewhere that in the UK alone, something like 15 million sheepskins a year are destroyed, which just seems totally nuts. If the meat industry is an inevitability, as of course it is, then I'd much rather see as much of the sheep as possible going to use. Then there is the subject of how the sheep was raised, how it was slaughtered, and how the animal hide was then tanned. I'll be honest with you, the information out there is pretty patchy, pretty patchy at best. There doesn't seem to be a universal seal of approval in the same way that there is for, for down, which is probably a reflection of the, the popularity of the respective materials. A good rule of thumb would seem to be this. If whatever the product is, whatever it might be that's being touted as being made of sheepskin, if it looks too perfect, if it looks too uniform, then there's a good chance, like it's a good bet, that whatever that might be, that sheepskin hide has been through some pretty awful chemical processes, some pretty harsh treatments to get it looking that perfect. These perfect hides, they're mass produced as cheap as possible, and this cost cutting is reflected in the sourcing of the animals themselves. Think of the, the fluffy IKEA rugs that you get for 30 bucks compared to this B3. With down, it is actually quite a lot easier to ensure that you're making an ethical choice. The down industry seems to be very well regulated and there are organizations in place that will audit and award stamps of approval for ethical down, which is a very good thing because non-ethical down is a fucking horrible process. You see, down is not really feathers. Well, it's feathers, but it's not really feathers. It's like, it's a mid layer between the outer feathers and the bird's skin. To get the down, obviously it's got to be removed from the bird's skin. Hopefully when it's been slaughtered. 
but quite often when the bird is still alive. Imagine being held down and having all your hair pulled out. Yep, not nice. And this is often done to birds that are already having a totally shitty time of it. So geese that are being bred for goose liver pate, or, or ducks that are being bred just for their meat. So thank God that there actually are these ethical choices. And thank God that there are strict standards that these manufacturers and these producers have to, have to adhere to if they want this label of ethical down. This really is one of, the, one of the cases where consumer purchasing habits, where it's actually driving a positive change in the fashion industry. The sustainable down standard, that seems to be the, the industry standard for ethical and sustainable down production. So if you look for this logo, then it's, it's like a stamp of approval that the down that's in the garment that you're thinking of buying it's going to be produced in an ethical fashion. I've put a link down below to a website where you can find lots more information on that. And you can actually download a few PDFs where you can see exactly the, the steps that the down manufacturer has to go through and the standards that they have to achieve before they're going to get this, this stamp of approval. Okay, the final aspect of this ethics and sustainability. I know this has been quite a long one, but there is one last important thing that we've got to take into consideration. And that is the, the types of material that's actually that's gone into making the jacket. Down jackets, they need some sort of outer material. They need something to contain the down in. And even though in theory, this material can be absolutely anything, I do see a lot of synthetic materials used as this outer layer. Down itself is 100% biodegradable. What it's contained in might not be, so it's something to consider. A sheepskin jacket, on the other hand, is made of sheepskins. Throw that in the ground and after a couple of years you're going to be left with some metal lumps from the hardware and yeah, if it was polycotton thread that they were using for the thread, then you're going to be left some threads as well. Okay, we're down to our final point, point six, and that is practicality. From a purely practical standpoint, downwinds. I don't think there's any material out there, either man-made or natural, that has the, the equivalent insulation properties. You just get the, the best possible insulation for the least possible weight. And depending on the material used to make the outer shell of the jacket, it can be pretty durable. It can pack down to almost nothing and you're gonna get pretty much total freedom of movement. I'm also told that when these things get a little bit stinky, you can just throw them in the washing machine. It really is just an all round practical choice. Sheepskin on the other hand, it's heavy. It takes quite a long time to break in and on some styles, unless you intend on sizing up quite a lot, you can basically forget reaching anything over your head. And when it comes time to wash it, you've got to take it along to a specialist. But it is plenty warm enough, it's going to be more durable and it's going to age better. There's also the fact that sheepskin is just naturally water resistant. From what I've seen on most of the down jackets that I've been having a look at, the outer material seems more geared towards heat retention rather than water resistance. It seems that you need like an outer layer for that. If you are really caught in a downpour and it's freezing cold, then I, I, I think from what I understand that the down loses most of its insulating properties. Whereas if you're totally soaked through in a sheepskin, the, the wool actually, it retains all of its insulation properties and it will still keep you quite warm for me personally, I prefer sheepskin over down for one simple reason. When I'm wearing my, my down jackets, the, they're certainly they're plenty warm enough. It even seems like the heat is being radiated into me, but then I get very, very sweaty and the moisture doesn't seem to be, it doesn't seem to be wicked away. When I'm wearing my, my sheepskin, the temperature seems to be much more evenly regulated. I don't get as hot, therefore I don't get as sweaty. And when I do get a little bit sweaty, that moisture seems to be just like, it wicks it away much, much better than the down does. At the end of the day, guys, it's, it's a balance. There are no perfect garments out there. It's, it's up to you to, to weigh your different options, to weigh the pros and cons of each, and make a decision on whatever garments it might be. In this case, it's gonna be a winter jacket, to make a decision based on what's gonna be the best for you and for your lifestyle. So hopefully when it comes to this subject, at least, you're a little bit more equipped to make that right choice. So I've not actually looked at how many minutes this has been recording, but I'm guessing this has been a long one. So guys, if you're still here, if you're still watching, I really, I really appreciate it. 
If you, if you are still watching and you're not already, it'd be amazing if you could just hit that subscribe button. Right next to that, there is the bell notification icon. That way you're gonna get notified whenever I drop a new video. And yeah, guys, if you, if you have enjoyed this, if you, if you feel that it's brought something to you, then it'd be amazing if you could just hit that thumbs up button. It does help us out. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm and all that blah, blah, blah. Helps grow the channel. And as always, guys, I hope everyone out there is happy. I hope you're healthy. I hope you're taking care of each other. Hope you're taking care of yourselves. And I'm gonna see you in the next video.